James Hinchcliffe has always been a fan favorite in the IndyCar paddock, but in 2015, practice for the Indianapolis 500, we almost lost James Hinchcliffe. James was in race trim riding behind Juan Pablo Montoya when his suspension failed, and he absolutely hammered the outside wall. James never lost consciousness during this, but the impact was so severe that the piece of the suspension actually punctured the tub of the race car that James was sitting in and went right through his legs. You can actually see the piece right here. James himself literally jokes that he was a human shish kebab. I got shish kebab by, a, by a, an AR. The safety team arrived on the scene relatively quickly as they seen that James was moving, but when they tried to extract him from the race car, they realized that he felt kind of heavy, and that's when they realized that there was a pool of blood because he was literally impaled with the piece that was through the race car. And normally in a situation where you get impaled, you want to leave that piece in until you get to the hospital but that was not possible in this situation and when they removed James from the car the piece fell out and James began bleeding at an extreme rate. He was rushed to the trauma center that was just down the street from the speedway and when they put James in the elevator to go up to the second floor to do surgery they actually lost James's pulse. During this whole time they were giving James blood transfusions. They ended up pumping James with 22 units of blood which is basically double of what his entire body holds as your body holds about 11 but thankfully the doctors got everything under control and they saved James's life. Hinch would obviously miss the remainder of the 2015 season due to his injuries sustained in this crash and he knew that he'd have to work extra hard to get back and be ready for the 2016 season and that's exactly what he did. He worked hard and he was ready to compete at St. Pete for the season opener. When the IndyCar series returned to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500, James got off to a pretty conservative start in practice throughout the week, posting the 29th, 28th, and 14th fastest time. But when the boost was turned up on Fast Friday, James put in the third quickest four lap average. And then on the first day of qualifying, James Hinchcliffe put in the fastest time of the day with a four lap average of 230.946 miles an hour, firmly locking himself into the fast nine for Sunday. When Sunday came, James was the last car to go out for qualifying. And he was the only one standing in the way from Joseph Newgarden scoring the pole for the 100th running of the race. Here's James's qualifying run. So here he is, James Hinchcliffe. What a story. From a year ago, nearly losing his life in a savage crash here. Saved thanks to the excellent work by the Speedway's amazing safety team and quick work by the trauma doctors at the hospital downtown where he was rushed right into surgery. Never a question as to whether he was going to get back in a race car or not. He did that last fall at Road America. Coming back here at Indianapolis for a test earlier this spring. A big hurdle for him. He's not missed a beat. He's been fast this month. He was fastest yesterday. He has the chance to finish the story where pole position is concerned with the last say of the day. I keep going back to passion. You can only get through all of that with an enormous amount of passion for this place. And he was blindingly quick yesterday. We're four laps from finding out who wins the pole for the 100th Indianapolis 500. It's either going to be Joseph Newgarden from Nashville or Toronto's James Hinchcliffe. be fast enough in the straightaway. It was 238. You can hear the engine dip down in RPMs a little bit in turn two. Tells you that the car might not be free enough to get through the turn. He does have those driver aids that we talk about where he can adjust the car's handling from inside the cockpit. Trying not to scrub any. Look at his hands. How little he's moving the steering wheel. His first lap was the second fastest opening lap we've seen, but New Gardens was faster. Lap two was even faster yet for Hinch. This is gonna be close. Mm -hmm. 
Sam Schmidt, the team owner. Himself, such a great story. Someone it's so easy to root for. Look at the passion and the willpower that man has. It's going to be a critical lap. Let's see what lap three looks like as he takes the white flag. One lap to go. 230.7. He's going to have to do a 231 if he's going to get pole. What does it mean to be on the pole in Indianapolis? Sam Schmidt's expressions tell you everything. Two more corners for Hinch. He's tracking first. No. Going to be very close. Is it enough? Hinchcliffe or Newgarden for the 500 pole. It's Hinchcliffe. Was completely wrong. He didn't need to do a 231. That is incredible. I am so happy for Sam. It came down to what seemed like the last 100 feet, but James Hinchcliffe was able to pull it off and score the pole for the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. What an amazing redemption story to come back one year later to the track that almost claimed your life and score the pole position for one of the biggest, if not the biggest race in the world. And you could tell by the fans reaction that it was a very popular event that day. As no, it seemed like nobody there wanted to not see James Hinchcliffe get the pole. Such a remarkable comeback story. And this is what James had to say. All right, Rick, go ahead, it's all yours. What do you say to James Hinchcliffe as he gets a hug from his mother Arlene We've talked a lot about a year ago what your condition was, sitting in a hospital bed, not being able to compete here. Now, you are the pole sitter for the Indy 500. A great event ever, but what does it mean to you now? You know, I, I came into this month really hoping that we'd have a new story to talk about uh, after what happened last year, and I think we did it. So, I, I can't believe it. I'm honestly, I'm kind of at a loss for words, which as you know is rare for me, but uh, the Air Electronics car was just an absolute smoke show out there. It was it was right on the edge. Alan McDonald, all my engineers, such a great job. Everybody at Schmidt Peterson Motorsport, you know, Sam Schmidt, Rick Peterson, give me in this car, and um, and giving me the car to do it. These guys worked so hard. Three Schmidt Peterson Motorsport cars in the top ten. It's incredible. And uh, and now we've got the best seat in the house for the start of 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. We were talking earlier about what is it like to walk out knowing you have a car to do it. And now it's up to you. It's it's crazy. You know, obviously, uh, this race is always more pressure than anywhere else. There's more focus on it than anywhere else. And being the 100, there's a little more attention as well. But, you know, obviously, we've done something right as a team. And uh, it's great to be able to stand here with such a great group of guys. And it's a long race. You know, 10 miles is one thing. you got to hold your breath for that whole thing. But uh, 500 is a very different deal. you gotta, you got to be patient. you got to breathe. you got to know when to push, when to relax. And uh, like I said, at least we got a good starting spot, the best starting spot. And uh, we can kind of go from there. Your mom and dad came in and gave you hugs afterwards. What did that mean? You know, a year ago they came here for a very different reason. And um, they, were out of, they were out of the country when I had my accident last year. And, you know, I can't imagine what that plane trip must have been like for them. And, you know, mom, mom moved in on May 1st. She said she wasn't missing a single lap of on-track action just in case I tried to kill myself again. And uh, luckily that wasn't the case. So, you know, we're here. I mean, these two have been everything in my life, in my career. I couldn't have done any of it without any of them. And, uh, I'm just... We did, Ed. We pull, did it, man. Pull up the 500. How about that? How about that? Not bad. Awesome. Congratulations to James. Oh, yeah, it's a pretty emotional day, especially if you're a Hinchcliffe fan. But it was a really popular day amongst the fans and the sport as a whole to see Hinch come back and get the pole. Unfortunately, in the race, he was not able to hold on and win it, but he did manage to come in seventh, which is very respectable. And it's always a good day when you get a top 10 in the Indianapolis 500. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more content just like this, make sure to subscribe. I'll be uploading every Tuesday with IndyCar and NASCAR content just like this. And just do me a favor and thumbs this video up if you liked it or thumbs it down if you didn't. And I hope to see you in my next one. Take care, everybody.